Ever since I first started using KiCad for PCB design, I've always just manually created the panels using KiCad itself. I even made a video a while back on the process that I would use. It was really clunky and frankly took way too much time. I knew that there was a plugin called KiKit that could automate this and quite a few viewers even recommended it to me. I had always figured that it was going to be too basic or too generic for my use case, so I never really gave it a try. But around six months ago, I finally bit the bullet, downloaded it, and gave it a shot. Boy, was I wrong. It is incredibly powerful, and I've used it honestly on every single project since then. There's a ton of great documentation on the project's GitHub page. So I don't really just want to recite what's on there. Instead, what I'm going to do is go through three example projects showing you exactly how I use it day to day. First, just a bit of a side note, KiKit exists both in a GUI and a command line interface. I really don't find the GUI to be very useful for anything more than just testing out features. There's no way to save and come back to a project. And the big one for me, you can't really reuse the same settings for a different project. So everything that I'm going to be showing will be using the command line interface exclusively. The first board is going to be a basic 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter square. I have a couple connectors and a few resistors on it. For this panel, let's just say this is the first test of a new design. Instead of just ordering the single board, I like to put some rails on it to make pasting and handling the board easier. This would be called like a 1U or 1UP panel because there's just one board. Since there's nothing complex about the board outline or any overhanging connectors, I'm going to make the rails attached to the PCB using a V-score. This means the fab house simply cuts most of the way through the board edge to make breaking it apart nice and easy. To start the panel, I make a new folder within the project and I name it panel. Inside, I create a text file named KiKit script. This will hold the command to generate the panel. I'm going to paste in the completed command set, which would normally be copy and pasted from a prior project. The first line is where I put the location of the project, which I use to change directory within the KiCad command prompt. Then I call the KiKit panelize command. The first category is called layout, which is where I say I want a one by one or one U panel. Next is source, which tells KiKit where the board edges are. I use auto to let it find the edges. The tolerance parameter is really important if you have overhanging parts or connectors. I don't, so I can just choose 10 millimeters. I set tabs to full so the score will be along the entire board edge. Cuts are V cuts with a clearance to copper of 0.5 millimeters. The framing category is where I set the panel rails, which I want to be 10 millimeters on all sides. I say I want three fiducials with a two millimeter solder mass clearance with an offset of 15 millimeters in the X and eight millimeters in the Y. Finally, I just set some basic text with an arrow showing which way to feed into our pick and place. With the full command written out, all that is left to do is open the KiCad command prompt, change directory to our project and paste the command. After a few seconds, we now have a new project within the panel folder named panel. When we open the PCB, we see that there is a one new panel with all of the desired specs. The second example is going to be using the exact same board as the first. The only difference is that now I want to make this board in production. So instead of it just being a one new panel, it's now going to be an eight U set up in a four by two configuration. As you probably can guess, all I need to do is change the row and column parameters within the layout category. Running this new command gives us an 8U panel with the exact same specs as the prior 1U. Now for the third and final board, it's similar to the first, but now both connectors are overhanging on the north and south edges. There are also some passives close to the east and west edges. This prevents me from using a V-score on any edge. Instead, I'll use mouse bite tabs. The easiest way to place these within KiCad, at least for me, is using the annotation parameter. For this example, I will do a 6U panel with only one row of boards just to keep it less complicated. The first step is to download the KiKit tab footprint. An important note is that it must be called tab and live within a library called KiKit. Once added, I place two of them on each the east and west edges, six millimeters from the respective corners. This is exactly where KiKit will place the tabs when generating the panel. Next, going through the new script, I change the rows and columns to one and six respectively, 
and added an H space parameter of one millimeter, which is the space between boards. The tab category I changed to annotation with a width of 10 millimeters. The width is simply how large the tab will be. The cuts category I changed to mouse bytes with an offset of 0.25 millimeters, which is how far inside the board the tab's holes will be, and a prolong of 0.5 millimeters, which is how far the edge fillet will be cut by the router. Finally, I add a new category called post with a parameter called mill radius. This is simply the size of the router we want to be used for actually milling the panel. This normally should match the board spacing to make sure there's not additional fab work that needs to be done. Do be aware this uses radius and not diameter. Running this command and opening the PCB, we see the 6U panel with mouse bytes exactly where the tab footprints were. KaiKit also added holes along the two outer frames to allow these to be broken out first, which removes the rest of the frame. Before I wrap this up, there is one important thing to note. If you on your original PCB modified the solder mask or paste clearances or wish to use a DRC with your design rules on the panel, you must import those settings into the new panel. Once you generate your first test panel for a project, import the settings and all subsequent panels you run for that same project will then have those settings. So this has been a super quick introduction to KiteKid and showing you the exact same workflow that I use on projects for work. Hopefully this was useful and please make sure to check out the project on GitHub. They have tons of information additional that I certainly did not have time to cover. It'll be linked in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next video.